Hey guys, it's Drea. So today I have an update to my chopping block uh, video that I posted probably I think it was a little over a month ago. This is all stuff that I've been using off and on for the last month, kind of deciding if I want to keep it or if I want to declutter it. And spoiler alert, most of it's getting decluttered. I think there's maybe two things in here that I'm going to keep. Um, the the thought behind a chopping block is kind of like, this is stuff that's in my collection, it hardly gets used, why am I not using it? I'm trying to discover if there's a good reason, if I'm just missing out on something that is actually amazing, because um, it's just sitting languishing in my collection, or if there's actually a good reason that I'm not reaching for it and I just need to actually ax it and get it out. So I've really come to some solid conclusions with all of this and now we're gonna review it all. So let's start with this. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Um, my shade here just says bronzer. I'm still honestly confused over the shade range here of what's what, uh, which one is the original, which one is like new shades. I, I don't really understand it. But this is the shade bronzer. It has that coconutty scent, uh, just like when it first came out years ago. I put this in here because years ago, I did really, really like this bronzer. And then when I repurchased it about a year ago, I kind of just didn't love the way it went on. Now I'm wearing it today. It's not my bronzer of choice. It's not the bronzer that I kind of wear on the daily. I feel like this tone for me is just not quite right. Like there's something a little too cool toned about it. There's something in this formula where I feel like it doesn't blend as nicely on my face as a lot of other bronzers. Um, and the tone just looks totally wrong for the way it blends. So. To me, it just looks patchy all the time. I never quite like the way my bronzer looks and I am not one who's really great at bronzer application in the first place. So I really need stuff that's totally foolproof and like you can't see mistakes with it because I, I don't know, I still struggle with bronzer application all the time. So this I am going to pass along to a friend and I am, anything that's getting decluttered is gonna go to friends. Um, but that is out of here and I'm never gonna repurchase it again because now I know for sure why I don't like it. Next is this ColourPop highlighter. This is the Super Shock Cheek in Lunch Money. I have a few of these Super, Super Shock ColourPop highlighters. They're the ones that are really like putty-like. They're very bouncy. Um, this one has pan on it, not because I use it a lot, but because this just kind of moves around a lot um, and it moves to the sides and it kind of pan happens really fast on these. So here's a swatch of it here. On my hand, the swatch actually looks really nice. It looks like just kind of like a wet sheen. The problem that I have with this is that A, the texture. The texture, you kind of have to put on top of no powder um, with a finger. This, this does not work with a brush. You have to use a finger. And when I put it on top of no powder, I can kind of get it to blend in, but then I have really oily skin and I have to powder my skin. So when I powder my skin, it really just loses anything that it had. If I try to put this on top of powder, it just looks wrong. It looks like a weird gray shadow on my face and the tone of it, again, just isn't quite right. So even though it looks really, really pretty in a swatch, it is not for me. And I can just stick to the other two ColourPop ones I have in love and continue loving them. But this one just doesn't work. Um, this here I got in a BoxyCharm a while back. This is the Ciate Eye Luster Cream Eyeshadow. There is no shade on here. Try as I might, there is no shade name on here. But I believe when these came out in BoxyCharm, everybody got the same shade, if, I, if I'm recalling correctly. Um, this is very much like a opaly, kind of golden, pink, shifting cream eyeshadow. Again, it looks really, really pretty in a swatch. Um, you can't really go super heavy with this because for it to dry, it needs a little bit of a thinner layer. With a really thick layer, it just kind of gets like really chunky. So with a thinner layer, like what I do is I kind of just like tap it with my finger. It's still really pretty when you do that, but it's much more of just like a very light type of glitteriness to it. And Throughout the day, it really kind of loses what it has. This isn't like, for example, the Stila glitters where they actually have glitter in them and they stay on your eyes and they stick to your eyes. This is just kind of much more of a sheen with the tiniest little particles of shimmer and it just kind of fades into oblivion throughout the day. So it's not as pretty as when in a swatch, it's not as pretty as when you first put it on. 
and I really don't need that. I have enough single eyeshadows with glitter, palettes, all kinds of eyeshadow. I don't need that kind of thing in my collection. Okay, let's move on to something I'm going to keep. Um, I don't love this, but I'm still going to keep it. This is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Super Concealer Camouflage and 24 Hour Wear. Mine is in the shade Moderately Fair 14. Again, the shade range for this is very strange in the way they name it, like Moderately Fair. This is basically a medium. It, in any other concealer, this would be called medium. It's like, it's a pretty deep, warm beige. That is not fair in any way. So I feel like if you're shopping online for this concealer, you're gonna have a hard time picking a shade. I got this deluxe sample, 100 points, something, some kind of thing from Sephora a while back. That's why it's a little tiny guy. Um, and I didn't have a huge array of shades to choose from. So this is the shade that I ended up getting. I am wearing this under my eyes today. I don't think that it is the best in terms of covering up my dark circles. And I have very dark circles. You can still see like they're coming through a little bit. Um, and what does it say in here? So it's the super concealer camouflage is what it's calling itself. No, 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 no. This is a medium coverage, kind of slightly hydrating satin finish concealer at best. There's nothing camouflage about this. There's nothing super about this. This is a basic bitch concealer. <laughs> All right, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, but I do see myself being able to use it till it either goes bad or I use it up, no biggie. So I'm gonna keep this. Um, moving on, this eyeshadow palette is saying goodbye. This is the Wander Beauty Wondrous Fling eyeshadow palette. It has six shades in it. One of them is kind of, it's not a matte, but it's not a satin. It's kind of like a matte satin hybrid. It's very, very smooth. Um, and it does work in terms of like a crease color, kind of just having something in the crease because everything else in here is shimmers. You can't really see it because it's almost exactly my skin tone a little bit more pink but there's not a ton of pigment to it either so not really the greatest for me okay so here's all the other colors in here all the shimmers they look absolutely beautiful in swatches these are finger swatches i have tried with a brush on my eyes with these i've tried with my fingers with these and no matter what i do once i get it on my eyelid it loses any sheen, any metallic, it becomes dusty and like flat. The color is flat. You don't see anything sparkly. There's nothing like this metallic going on on the eyes. And I just can't really figure out why that is. I don't know if it's my eyelids because they're getting older, um, but it's just not translating. Tried it with Fix Plus. I wore this yesterday. I wore this one here, Blossom, yesterday which is this shade here. In a swatch, this is like a pinky gold. It's really pretty. It's like that kind of shade that I was talking about, like Tarte Frosé, which is like very bright pink with a gold shift to it. And normally I love this kind of shade. I wore it yesterday. It was just flat and boring. And eventually, like anything that it even had in the first hour, it just faded where it looked like yesterday I was wearing a slight wash of pink on my eyelids with like winged liner and it was just very boring and I can't keep this in my collection because I can't do anything with it and I just end up getting frustrated by it by looking at it and all that stuff so that's going by um two last things in here this is a primer this is the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector sample size again this guy, I think if you have like super oily skin and you really, really, really like mattifying products, this will do something for you. Because if you put this in your oiliest spots, it will kind of just, it almost acts like, you know when a beaver builds a dam and it stops everything from getting it through? That's like this. This has this kind of gluey texture where if you, you have to use only a little of this. If you lightly tap it, like in my T-zone, for example, it turns into this stuff that looks like white glue. And it's really weird. Sometimes I'm afraid my foundation isn't even covering it after that point, um, but it does work. Now, the only thing is I'm really, like I am oily, but I've come to a point in my life where I don't really love using mattifying products. I like to just let my skin be my skin, 
if I have to blot off excess oil with a paper towel throughout the day, um, that's what I do. Sometimes I repowder, but I just don't use mattifying things anymore. I just let my skin breathe. And I'm much happier, I think, just, just coming to terms with the oiliness of my skin instead of working against it constantly. So I just don't really need this anymore. It is a really good primer if you wanna stop your oil, um, but I don't need it in my collection. Okay, the last two things are both blushes from the brand Sleek. Um, they don't have a particular name, it just says Sleek and then it says blush on the back. This one is called Life's a Peach and this one is called Rose Gold. This one is a matte and this one has a definite shimmer to it. Now, I've swatched Life's a Peach twice. What I did is I swatched it one pass with a finger and this I went over four times until I could get it as built up as possible. This is Rose Gold, which I only had to swatch once. Now, I really like Rose Gold a lot. Rose Gold is the blush that I'm wearing today. I'm wearing a really, really shiny highlighter on top of it though. Um, but I've worn Rose Gold a ton over the last month, a ton. It's a really beautiful kind of bright pink with the slightest, just slightest golden shimmer to it. So it's definitely shimmery and you can just barely tell that it's a golden shimmer. Um, Life's a Peach, I normally would love love this kind of color and I do have some blushes in my collection in this shade um, but this one I'm gonna get rid of because do you see how one swatch here is just it's kind of light and when it goes onto a brush even it's quite a bit lighter and I just find myself having to try to build this up more and more and more and more on my cheeks and I never quite get there where I have other blush shades almost the same as this in my collection where I don't have to spend so much time building them up. Sometimes an unpigmented blush is not a bad thing because you don't always want a lot at once because you can end up looking like a clown, right? But this one is almost not enough. Like I just don't have time to sit there and, and build it up to a point where it, it can't even go any further and it's not exactly what I want. So even though I think it's a really, really pretty color, the formula just isn't quite right. But this one here I'm definitely gonna keep because it is really, really beautiful color and I've been enjoying it a lot. So that is it for my chopping block. Here are all the things that are getting decluttered and then just these two things that I've discovered that I like enough to keep in my collection. If you've never done this kind of thing before yourself and you have kind of a bigger collection that you wanna sort through, I would encourage you to do it it's a really good way like just keeping it in a box kind of separate where you do your makeup kind of reminds you to try these things out see how they integrate into your makeup routine and kind of helps you decide if you like them or not so I probably will continue with this series I'll get another chopping block box going pretty soon so definitely subscribe if you haven't yet and I hope you're having a wonderful day I hope that you're speaking kindly to yourself especially when you look in the mirror I love you guys and I will see you in my next video bye